Um, my name is Kwekwe uh, Kivutha. I'm an interior designer uh, with the company 2x4. My name is Jeremy Moses, uh, also an interior designer, also with 2x4, from a Caribbean Canadian background. This is called the Moja Pod. A container is it's designed to take heavy loads, be shipped, be transported all over. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's fantastic bones uh, yeah. for any sort of structure that you want to use. So you, what you want to use. And there's already been lots of container conversions here in uh, Kenya. Mm -hmm. um, but we thought that there would be other people like ourselves who would like it done finished in, a, in just a better quality finish. Yeah. That it doesn't have to look like you're in a container. Uh, so, so that's where this whole idea is. is uh, let's just design a space that just feels like home. Feels like a nice, comfortable home. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have to be big, but has to be nice. It has been constructed so that you can either plug it in into existing systems, like an existing sewer system, or there's the possibility that you could also take the option with the bio box. So what the bio box does is that it takes uh, uh, your, your waste water. So that's the black waste, which is from the toilet, and the gray waste, which is from the kitchen and the shower and the, uh, the hand basin. And it uh, works with it and uh, purifies it so that it can separate the bio slurry from now the water. So this water can be recirculated and flush your toilets and also be used for cleaning. While the bio slurry is a fertilizer. Uh, and can be disposed of in a very safe way. Uh, it has no smell and it's actually a fertilizer. With each model, uh, you can choose the option to have a kitchen. Uh, if you do, it'll come with full appliances, uh, mini fridge, cooker, sink. If you want the bathroom option, it'll come again with all the appliances, the, the fixtures there, toilets, shower, basin, vanity. Um, and again with the bedroom, wardrobe and everything there. Currently, the Mojapod is the first prototype which is the 40-foot container, but we also have uh, the Moja 40-foot container, which uh, is twice this size, and it will have a separate bedroom and a larger living area. For the past five years with our firm 2x4, we've really wanted to make sure we, we make sure we build spaces that are comfortable, that, that people enjoy using. Mm -hmm. And so we've really focused on, on making sure the details, or the, the things that people don't see, they just experience. They, when you walk in, you realize, oh, not only does it look nice, it actually feels nice as well. We are partners in business and in life. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we met in 2007? Yes. 27? 2007, 13th February. Yeah. And then uh, just over the years, we just grew to doing this company together. It took 15 days uh, to build this from scratch, so 15 days from when the container was dropped onto site. Um, but even though it took 15 days, it's taken like, I would say, two years of serious articulation of the idea. A lot of people have not even believed that this is a shipping container because of how mm -hmm. open it feels. Mm -hmm. right? so, so that was kind of a large part why we went with the bright colors, the large windows, mm -hmm. just so that even though it could feel small, mm -hmm. it hopefully feels much bigger than it actually is. Mm -hmm. And even just the placement of windows, for example. Anywhere you're sitting, you have the view to outside, which sort of extends your perception of your space. And as we're seeing now, our urban settlements, we're running out of space. Okay, The city can't just grow outwards forever. We can't afford these cities. Mm -hmm. And so, so we're realizing that it doesn't make sense. We can't afford these houses, both as uh, individually and also at a community as a large public uh, uh, issue as well. I think we build uh, for our ego and really not for our needs. A large house is not, it, it's expensive to furnish it, <laughs> it's expensive to maintain it, mm -hmm. it's expensive to keep it looking as it is, mm -hmm. right? And so it's lovely at first, but I think you find people who have lived them years after year after year and a generation after year, people start to question, is this really how much, I'm putting so much energy, time, money into this mm -hmm. large space and how much of it do I even actually use and enjoy? Even just our past, our immediate past, you know, looking at the heart, looking at the manyata and all that stuff, those were quite constrained spaces. They weren't big and lavish, you know, like your everyday kind of living. They were a collection of small spaces and most of the living happened outdoors. Mm -hmm. You know, and those are things that I think we need to borrow, mm -hmm. you know, to look at and see why they worked mm -hmm. and borrow from that in a sort of urban, uh, urban way that suits our day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. We've gotten a lot of feedback from retail, uh, from hospitality, um, 
clinics, clinics, uh, shops, mm -hmm. manufacturing, uh, jam, yeah. staff uh, processing. Quarters. Yeah, staff so, quarters, like so it's up to us to work as hard as we can to get the concept out and uh, to deliver what we, we, we are saying that we'll deliver. African products uh, should have multiple stories. So not just, uh, you know, the regular story of uh, you know, like uh, quite uh, uh, rough, rustic, and, and and all that stuff. That's okay, yeah. But I think we should now start to have multiple stories uh, of what an African product can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can build, design, build nice things right here mm -hmm. at home. I, I think part of it is just two options: open mindset, open eyes. Uh, you know, not eyes, but just different options to how we can build, how we can live uh, in, in in spaces that are that are good for our well-being.